Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely glad to welcome you again. Today we will have a conversation with the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, you finished the previous meeting with the words that now is the time of responsibility, the responsibility of every sensible person. Because if we have at least any chance to save this world, then it is definitely our responsibility. And you know, in the previous video you said the words which resonated very much, that our society actually has everything. There are technologies, there are opportunities, there are even solutions, and there are experts. Everything is available, but there is no creative society. And you know, a lot A lot of people across the world are searching for an answer. Why did it so happen that at the most serious and most responsible time for the life of our society and our humanity, we are in fact at a dead end as society? The answer to this question is extremely important because, as they say, a correct and timely diagnosis is already halfway to success in a patient's recovery. So our viewers, participants of the Creative Society project, are looking for answers to these questions. Why are we as society in such a situation right now? Having the opportunity to live in a wonderful world where there is prosperity, friendship and peace, why do we live differently? And what is actually the cause of the global crisis in the world? It's a very profound question. Indeed, friends. As of today, there is a global crisis in everything. Let me put it simply. In fact, today, all of us understand that in this world everything is wrong and amiss, and that at some point in time we went the wrong way. So now the majority of people, not everyone, unfortunately not everyone, but most people in this world understand that we are approaching a certain point. People feel it. While those who are really able to look around, analyze and sometimes listen, to what is happening in the world, understand perfectly well that everything is not so simple with the climate, and that it is far from being a problem of the anthropogenic factor, that our world is ceasing to exist. And this is no longer a fairy tale or nonsense. They are already talking about this from high rostrums, but they are talking in a very strange way. And many people start pondering, what is wrong? Why have we come to where we are now? In an attempt to answer this question, a lot of participants, volunteers of the Creative Society project, are making every effort to find an answer to the question of where and when we, as humanity, made a wrong step. Why? Because, I'll put it this way, when a person is falling from a height, and he realizes that he has a little bit left to fly, but this is the last moment of his life. His entire life passes before his eyes, from his childhood and up to the moment when he stumbled. The same is with us. Feeling and understanding it all, the entire hopelessness of the current situation, many people begin to review history, the one that is available, of why we have reached a dead end. Thus, it turns out that a lot of volunteers begin to study our history. Indeed, if we take a look, it turns out that over the last 6,000 years, every step we made as humanity has been taken in the wrong direction. Why in the wrong direction? The answer is simple. In fact, throughout all this time, we, as a human community, as people endowed with a mind and perception through feelings, we were supposed to take all the steps, our common steps, aimed solely at improving our lives. This is logical. We should have taken every step in the direction which would make our world safe and our lives better. We should have built a world where we would like to live, a world where people wouldn't suffer. Is this reasonable? Absolutely reasonable. Even animals, what do they strive for? They strive to defend their territory, to be fed and to dominate. 
really dominate in a particular territory. Yes, animals fight among themselves for territory, but they strive for the better. Whereas we behaved like animals, only much worse. We started fighting against each other. We began to be divided, to be divided by skin color, by language. We began to be divided even in families. We began to be divided everywhere and to oppose each other. Thus, it turns out that we, as humanity, became engulfed by the darkness. And this very darkness started controlling us. There is no other way to put it. Yet, were there any attempts to get out of the current bad situation? I will say, yes, there were. And there were many of them, searching for an answer to where and when we had stumbled. People arrived at the fact that, more than once in our world, there appeared leaders, people, prophets, messengers of the Lord God, who came and brought simple truths, those truths which we, as humanity, that is endowed with the mind, were supposed to absorb and change the direction of our movement from destructive and detrimental for each and everyone, and for us as humanity as a whole, to a creative direction. After all, this is indeed true. And the paradox is that by studying it all, people come to understand how terrible our world is and how dominant the darkness actually is here. There are simple examples. In fact, let's not go far. Although there were many prophets, even before Jesus Christ, there are guys who prepare conferences on these very subjects. And the essence of those conferences, where the religious aspect is also analyzed. While it is very important, it is fundamental, I would say, the religious aspect in our life should be the main and primary one. After all, what is God? God is the one who gives life, eternal life. And we are well aware that we are here for a very short period of time. If we feel and understand this, and in fact, each of us feels and understands that life doesn't end with the death of our bodies. And we understand perfectly well that after our physical death, another world will come where we will find ourselves. We feel that. And there are many, various legends. Well, some people will say that those are fairy tales. Okay, let it be fairy tales. However, a human should have hope, a hope for the better, a hope that at least after the death of his physical body, he can gain what he deserves. A just, different world. If we can no longer attain justice in this world, therefore, religion is important. I would say not religion, but the teachings which were brought here by the messengers of God Himself. But what took place? There is actually an interesting, paradoxical point. Our participants held a conference on Islam. In fact, the essence of such conferences concerning religions is not, let's say, to undermine people's faith in God or in religion. No, absolutely not. First of all, people try to find truthful, real answers to what happened and why everything went wrong. After all, the Prophet Muhammad was really the last Prophet. It was exactly he who brought here the Qur'an, the teaching. Please note, not a religion, but the teaching that Allah sent down to him. And the essence of it was what he tried to convey to all of us, unity, brotherhood, peace and love, mutual respect, cessation of all wars, a new, different world. And the Medina Charter, which was actually introduced by the Prophet, was an example for everyone. Well, essentially, it is what we now call the Creative Society. It would seem that the world should have changed. 
After all, people should have seen that this is right, this is better, this is really what would save all of us. However, it happened as always. As soon as the Prophet had left this world, his teaching, well, the teaching isn't his, it is the teaching of Allah. But it was actually Prophet Muhammad who brought it here, conveyed it and talked to us. He was exactly the one who endured a lot of unpleasant moments, criticism and persecution. This is really so. He endured and he proved to many people the essence of this teaching as the truth. But as soon as he had left, people altered it. And it is interesting that Islam was immediately divided. I mean, the teaching which was supposed to unite and make people wonderful, kind, loving, and brothers, true brothers, it was split. Some people followed those who remained faithful to the Prophet, while others followed ordinary people who craved power, wealth, and everything else. And it is interesting that this very conference was held by those people who were Sunnis from their birth. This is the Islamic branch formed by those alleged followers of the Prophet Muhammad, who actually weren't his followers. They were only interested in power. And the purpose of the conference was not to expose anyone or, what's more, to somehow discredit that very Umar or, let's say, the Ummah or Islam in general. No, not at all. Because those participants are loyal to the Prophet, they really love Allah. However, we only see a dozen speakers at the conference, but we don't see the thousands of people who have actually studied the subject and studied it very profoundly. And for a long time, those are volunteers who have visited, let's say, the museums and libraries, not to mention research on the internet and everything else, who have consulted a lot with scholars who actually study Islam. Not those Islamic scholars who study it one-sidedly in order to strengthen the power and authority of the religion. No, but those who have actually studied the truth as historical facts, that truth which guys voiced at the conference, and they did a great job. All the volunteers who worked on this project did a great job. Why? Now is the time of the truth, the time of responsibility for everyone. And that truth which they actually voiced makes people think, we don't have time for games, for fantasies, for lying and hoping for something. We don't really have anyone or anything to hope for. Why? Because a huge disaster awaits us ahead. What awaits us, and we all realize this, is totally unacceptable and not wanted by anyone. The climate is no joke, and we see what is happening right now. Even at this moment, as you are listening to us, people are suffering quite severely because of the climate. Many are in the process of recovering from the consequences of climate change. They have been hit by, and many more will face them in the near future. Even what awaits us in the near future is scary. That is why, in these troubled and unstable times of ours, people are trying to get to the truth and figure out where we have made a mistake. After all, the last religion, the last prophet, the last hope for all humanity has failed. Yes, Prophet Muhammad, as it was said at the conference, is a man who hoped, he hoped for those followers, his followers, true Muslims, who love the Prophet, who love Allah, and he put his hopes on them, that they would be able to build the world which he dreamed of, and that everything would change. In essence, it is the creative society. And the paradox is that a lot of people are now in the Creative Society project, even those who have nothing to do with Islam. But thank God, 
There are Muslims too, and there are quite a lot of them, but not enough for us to make the Prophet's dream come true. Far from enough. There are eight billion of us. Think about that number. And in fact, judging by the speed we are moving at, we won't have enough time to inform everyone physically, to implement the Creative Society, and to make it a reality, which as of today is indeed the only project that gives at least some hope. The same applies to Christians. There are many volunteers around the world right now who are studying why it is so that Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, brought the knowledge, knowledge of love, knowledge that God is loving, knowledge that we should all be equal, that we should all be brothers and sisters to each other. And most importantly, He said that we are all friends. He said that each of us is a friend to one another. Yet after His departure, why did Christianity, supposedly, built on His knowledge and His teaching, become the bloodiest religion. It's a religion that has decimated millions of people. There is an absolute contradiction here. It is really true. Besides organizing a lot of wars and plenty of bad things, those people who call themselves followers of Christ promoted disunity and hatred. And this continues until today. So people are just trying to find out why and to answer this question. How has the darkness absorbed the light that Jesus Christ brought to us? And Christians are involved in this process. Christians are investigating why this happened and who is to blame. It doesn't matter anymore who is to blame. What matters is how it happened. Why do people study the past? I'll put it simply, to draw conclusions today so that we can do things differently tomorrow. Because today we are laying the foundations for tomorrow. And if we forget about yesterday, we might make the same mistakes today. So people try to use yesterday's knowledge to make a difference today. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time. This is really true. And as of today, the Creative Society is the only hope for any of us. I'll put it that way. It is a project that unites a huge number of people, normal, ordinary people of different religions, different professions and different nationalities. It is one united project for the whole of humanity. It is the only hope for today, which in reality, if implemented, can change a lot in the lives of each and every one of us. But it can change them for the better. And the meaning and the essence of the Creative Society is that if we implement it, the Creative Society itself, if we change our consumerist format into a creative one, then we have to think it all out and figure things out together so that no one suffers, so that everyone wins. And the meaning and the essence of this project is to ensure that we do not cause disadvantage to anyone. After all, there is no problem with all of us coming together, all of humanity. There is no reason why we cannot do that. But it is extremely challenging for us. And we are precisely trying to explore why it is so. Of course, the answer is obvious, so to say. Everything is visible and clear. It's because we have been divided for 6,000 years, because there are those few people who have been swallowed up by the darkness, because there is a huge mass of people who are in the gray area. 
They are neither with the light nor with the darkness. But this is a gray area, and it exactly creates this obstacle to the implementation of what Jesus Christ or the last prophet dreamed about, what each of us ultimately dreams of. And this is really true. Thus, we still have to find the strength and to implement this project. Why? Because the only option for all of us, and this is really true, is to build or to change the world we are in. We have several options. We've already discussed this. We can build a worse world by creating a single world government, that kind of global project which people are talking about. Then, yes, we could probably try and will together be able to at least somehow resist the changes that are taking place. But what will that lead to? Will we be able to change this world for the better in this vein? We will not. Will we gain anything? No. We may be able to prolong our existence a little longer, but not all of us. We lose in every scenario. Indeed, in every scenario. If we take this approach and move from the consumerist format to some kind of a dictatorial format, but in the creative society, we can do a lot. Tremendous opportunities will open up before us, and depending on how quickly we manage to implement the project and whether we want to implement it, we will either have a chance or not have a chance. It all depends on us. So again, you see, we are faced with a choice. But it turns out that it's not so easy to make everyone understand what the creative society is, especially since we are ordinary people, and even more so, because some people do not understand why it is necessary. But this misunderstanding is only because they do not know what the creative society is. This is really true. Many people who are in this gray area are afraid to support the creative society just because they are afraid of losing something. My friends, for those who are afraid of losing at least anything in this world, I'll say this, all of us, all of humanity, each and every one of us have already lost everything we have. It's just that some of us don't know it yet. It's really true. You know, this paradox is really a paradox, a paradox of our consciousness rejecting the reality that already exists. It even captures the minds of our scientists. Yes, of those scientists who are involved in the Creative Society project, who themselves look ahead, understand, study the climate problem, and they know better than anyone else how much time we have left as humanity. And their consciousness, as they themselves say, does not want to believe in that. Nobody's consciousness wants to believe in that. Even mine says, I'd rather not. But friends, we realize that this is inevitable. It is only inevitable in case we fail to build the creative society, or whatever else we will call it. If we do not, finally implement what the Prophets wanted. In fact, not the Prophets, but God. For this very reason, He sent the Prophets here, who told us what God wanted us to do. Yes, I understand that there are atheists, and there is an atheist in every one of us, the most ardent atheist, the Antichrist, in each of us, and this is true. This is indeed so. We humans are very interestingly arranged. There's a nature of light and a nature of night in us. And this very representative of darkness in each of us advocates something different. But do we want this world to end? If we are now afraid of losing something and don't want this to happen, we must understand that we have already lost it. We have. Let's say, 
very little time left to use what we have. And there's an evil joke from our consciousness. It says, even if we have only one day left, at least this day, I will live the way I want to. And we accept this. And here is the paradox. Who in us is saying that? Why do we agree with this dark entity in each of us that we will live this day the way we want to if we are not actually living? Because we are trying to create an illusion of living. We exist in constant fear, problems, pain and suffering. And now we are also living in anticipation of something inevitable. And everyone feels and understands this. In fact, when a person stops, I would say distracting himself artificially and trying not to think about what he feels, well, yes, if he is distracted, he doesn't hear. But if we look inside, we see the inevitable there, and it scares us. I agree. It is frightening. But we do have a chance. Every one of us has a chance for a future, for a beautiful and wonderful future. We just need to apply a little effort and build a world that will be comfortable and beneficial for everyone. Again, we should make even the transition from the consumerist format to the creative one comfortable and correct. We must ensure that no one loses anything. We must ensure that all of us, as a whole society, only gain something greater, better and everlasting. So that we stop falling ill, so that we finally stop being afraid, afraid of tomorrow and of tonight. We can do that, after all. Yet, why aren't we doing it? And this is where there's a paradox in us. There are no obstacles anywhere, of any kind, to the implementation of the Creative Society. Today, I'll say it again, we have all the scientific, technical and technological capabilities. We have all the resources, we have all the opportunities, and we have a lot of very smart people who can figure out everything that concerns transition from the consumerist format to the creative one, which will be convenient and advantageous for everyone. We are capable of building the creative society much better than even we discuss it with each other within the project itself. This world will be much more beautiful than we imagine it in our dreams. And we have these capabilities, yet we aren't doing this. However, again, we sometimes perceive the creative society itself as a tool, as a tool in someone's hands, as if someone wants to exploit something. And again, what does consciousness say, especially to those who are not familiar with the project, who are not inside it, and who are not involved in it, to those bystanders, you know? It's like when a person looks out of the night at the light, and it seems to him that everything is wrong, the outlines are too bright, it's too good, because here, when he looks into the night, everything is dark and blurred, whereas you have clear outlines. Hence, it benefits someone. And he looks for the one who benefits. My friends, I will answer. Yes, we all benefit, even you, those who do not want it. And there's another paradox. Who in a person does not want? It is precisely that very darkness that doesn't want it, but from the side of the light. As a human being, he wants it and dreams about it. This is really true. After all, what can be better than the Creative Society? But again, we have been taught, our history has taught us, indeed, excuse me, we will now go back to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. And what is its novelty? After all, the Old Testament also said to love one another. The novelty that Jesus Christ brought into our world is that we should love each other regardless of our nationality, whether we are distant or near, regardless of one's skin color and regardless of geographical location. 
he was saying to love one another as the entire mankind, each and every one, whereas in the Old Testament only the nearest people were dear to one another, just like nowadays. A simple question, have we, the followers of Christ, fulfilled His commandment or not? That's the answer to why we have such a world today. That's why this world is the way it is. But Jesus said that by this everyone will know that you are My disciples, whether or not you love one another in this world, without dividing people into friends or foes. And He gave us wonderful, amazing opportunities. He gave us the teaching, the will of God Himself. He came and conveyed to us that we should love one another, that we are friends to each other. But we immediately changed everything, and we accepted these changes. Yes, even though it was under pressure, yes, we were deceived, but we allowed that. And to this day, we allow it to be done to us. We have forgotten the essence and the truth. And now we perceive Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And God is avenging and punishing one. While Jesus Christ said that God is loving, that we should love one another, we should respect one another, and we should be together. Yet we are all divided within religion itself, and we accept this. So where's the problem? And what is the problem? Is the problem in God? Did He not express His will to us through Jesus Christ? After all, Jesus Christ conveyed to us the will of God Himself. But we, being believers in God, well, those who believe in Him, do not fulfill His will. Don't you find this funny? So what is the problem? Where is our global crisis? Is it in us or someone else? The answer is self-evident. Our global crisis is in each of us. I'll give you a simple example. Recently, just recently, some of our Creative Society project participants told us that we have a problem. And the problem is that in the Creative Society there are representatives of religions and there are representatives of other organizations, in particular the Freemasons and some others, who discredit the Creative Society and that people negatively perceive the Creative Society project because there are representatives of religions and various organizations in it, which are perceived by some people somehow negatively. So it would be good to exclude them, because this undermines the authority of the Creative Society. You know, it was so funny to listen to that. Why? I'll explain. Tell me, why do we, the Creative Society project, need authority? Authority is necessary to a religion. Authority is necessary to a certain organization, at the very least, to those in power. Well, there has to be authority of power over people, right? So that we perceive it correctly, or perceive some brand correctly. It's an authoritative brand, after all. But why would the Creative Society need authority? I have a simple question. Before whom? Before the devil? But why would we need authority before the devil? Or before whom? Do we want to boast of our authority before God? There are actually only two forces in this world before whom we, the participants of the Creative Society project, are able to demonstrate our authority before God and before the devil, but not before each other. Tell me, are there any competitors to the Creative Society? Can there be any competitors at all with whom we can compete in exercising authority? Or can we 
in the creative society, oust some organization because people in it believe in God. Well, not the way other people would like them to. You know, it seems to me that this is yet another tool of manipulation. When, just like in religions, just like in Christianity, in Islam, and in many other religions, there appear people who want to turn something good into a convenient tool for themselves, a tool that will allow them alone or in a small group to achieve some kind of power, to lift off people again. There is no other reason. However, why do we need authority? It is clear why they need it, but what about us? After all, we are the entire humanity. The Creative Society is every person who wants to live, and that's it. And it doesn't matter if he believes in God or not, he is a citizen of this planet, which means he should be a citizen of the Creative Society, no matter who he is. I'll even answer it in a simpler way. Let's consider this. If we have representatives of religions, actually, we have representatives of almost all religions. We have representatives of almost all organizations, including various clans. Even if they don't live exactly according to the law, still, they are human beings. Yet, why do they act this way? Even those who, let's say, are in conflict with the law. Because life is like that. The living and game conditions in this life are like that. We exist in the consumerist format. But will those people break laws in the creative society, since they are here, since they share these values? It means they want to change this world for the better and live by the law. Is that bad? Since Freemasons are here, whom many people do not understand, what kind of organization this is and what they are striving for, accusing Freemasons of making our world so bad. It is people's own business how to perceive whom. But I will answer this way. Since Freemasons support the Creative Society project, it means they are much better and smarter. It means they have a lot more light inside than those who say, your authority has dropped. If you get rid of Freemasons, maybe, I will also become a volunteer of the Creative Society. Friends, isn't this funny? It's really funny. Why is this funny? Because people continue to play around, people continue to be divided. We don't have time to be divided. That's really true. As for the fact that from time to time there emerge people who want to use the Creative Society as a force to accomplish their goals, in politics or in business. I'll put it this way, that's normal. These are the children of the consumerist format. Of course, they measure everything in terms of personal gain. And it doesn't matter what kind of organization it is, it doesn't matter what it strives for, their present day is important to them, where they have to earn money, dominate and exploit someone. Especially after we have demonstrated a little bit of our own I wouldn't say that this is our force, although, yes, it's a force, it's an egregore. While an egregore is a force, our common force, YouTube shut down our main channels. Do you remember, friends? Yes, we made very little effort, I would say. This comic confrontation with YouTube was taken up by a small number of volunteers really small, mostly people with a sense of humor. But what did it lead to? To a huge number of posts and to the truth that started to sound not only on YouTube itself, but on almost all social media. And indeed, it was a manifestation of the enormous power of united people which ultimately led to honest, decent and intelligent people appearing at YouTube itself. 
the channels we talked about were reinstated. Of course, a lot of our channels had been shut down, but we actually submitted claims regarding several major channels just before the form, and they were opened for us before the form. Moreover, let's put it carefully. The YouTube CEO has left her post voluntarily, the woman who ran YouTube for nine years and built it up. When she took it over and became its leader, it was a little-known, useless video hosting platform, but she turned it into a giant. However, under her leadership, dictatorship and tyranny developed in this social media. When they said, community rules restrict you in this or that, and millions upon millions of different channels of different bloggers were shut down without any explanation, they just up and closed them because somebody wanted it that way. When, excuse me, the interests of certain politicians were involved, or just of citizens with big wallets who did not want the public to hear anything about them, from honest and decent people on YouTube. And YouTube executed that. We raised the issue. Just as a joke and a game, we, the volunteers of the Creative Society Project, we said even more. We said that we were offended because our rights are rights as citizens of this planet. Our international rights were violated by this community. How can this happen? It cannot. Human rights are the highest value. And nobody has the right to restrict either constitutional rights or international rights because we are human beings. And just look, when we acted together, we were able to do this, we were able to defend our rights. Many people believe that this is a victory. My friends, what kind of victory is that? Tell me, please. And what is the victory here? And why should we, the people, defend our rights? Before whom? Why have we created a world where we have to defend our rights? And it doesn't matter whether in one country or at the international level. Why, up to this day, in the most peaceful project which aims to achieve the best, a project that takes into account all rights and opportunities, as well as the laws of almost all countries, after all, to this day, a significant number of lawyers continue to work on issues of rights, the rights of all of us, including the rights of volunteers of the Creative Society Project. Yes, friends, ours, so that no one has the right to encroach on our constitutional rights, both in a separate country and at the international level. And we do everything to stay within the law. We have never interfered and will not interfere in politics. No matter how much they push us and no matter how they try to manipulate us. Why? Because we firmly adhere to the position that we are representatives of all countries in the consumerist format. Each of us is a citizen of a particular country. And as a citizen of that country, the first thing one should do is defend the rights of one's country. This is really so. None of us has the right to weaken our own country in any way by our actions. It is really true. Why? Because in the consumerist format, if we weaken any country, especially our own country, and it doesn't matter which country it is, we will weaken its competitiveness. Or if by our actions, God forbid, we cause some kind of political instability, that will make our country vulnerable and weaken it, even in terms of economy. First of all, we and our families will suffer. And this has nothing to do with our citizenship and our, let's say, civic position. Whatever country we are in has nothing to do with our volunteer activities in the Creative Society Project. Here. In the project, we represent both the interests of the whole world and our personal interests. So here, we are no longer citizens of some individual country, but we are citizens of this world, representatives of all humanity, taking care of the whole world 
and of the entire humankind. And we say that we must build the creative society in such a way that no one would be disadvantaged, that justice would prevail, and no one would suffer, but only when. This is really so, and we are doing everything for that. However, excuse me, today, when in some countries a presentation of the Creative Society project is taking place in a police station, and citizens are invited to police stations to be informed about the Creative Society, in other countries, representatives of the police are picking on the participants. What is this sign? And say that this sign has something to do with extremism. This is already totally ridiculous. It's funny to us, when we look from a side, but when a person drives a car, he is a volunteer of the Creative Society, and he proudly puts our logo and writes that he supports the Creative Society because he is a human being, he is a citizen of not only his country, but also a citizen of this world. And then some policemen start telling him that he is an extremist, and this charge is so frightening and grave. You know, it's not funny anymore, even though we understand perfectly well who those police officers are, why they do that, and what makes them do it. We understand perfectly well that even local lawyers, well, we already mentioned in the video People in Power, that they are all connected, that a chief of the police, a prosecutor, a judge, and everyone else, a head of their security services, sit at the same table in the same bathhouse. This is a common practice in certain countries. That is why certain police officers there, simply because they are endowed with a little power, can twist the arms of peaceful, decent citizens. Unfortunately, this is a real fact of life, and there is only one goal behind it, just to make money. However, if a person starts seeking protection in the law, there are also lawyers who also sit in the bathhouse with that group. And these lawyers start scaring people that you'd better take the punishment for being good and honest people, otherwise it's going to get worse. You know, it's not funny, really. I look at all this and realize that such actions of certain police officers who want to either simply show off before their superiors or bring them more money in order to have Let's be honest, a better position at their stations than other policemen who do not bring money to superiors or, pardon me, do not report solved crimes. Well, such actions create a problem. No, not for us, not for the Creative Society. They create a problem in their country, for their people. They cause tension. So, when we told you in the video, People in Power, we said, imagine that some policemen may cause an international scandal. We already know what power is, the power of an egregore, the power of unification of people of goodwill, even with humor. Imagine that such a policeman who simply wants as we already said, to profiteer, who has a vested interest, who violates all constitutional and international laws that exist. Not only will he not be punished, but he may even be promoted, let's say, over other colleagues. He may get a new rank and a better life, while in fact, he may create a situation that will simply destroy his country. And when we said that, some people assumed that we wanted to play politics and that we were intimidating someone, that I was intimidating someone. I'm sorry, with what and how? We were just speaking the facts. We, as the Creative Society Project, certainly do not scare anyone, and we've never been and will never be involved in politics, especially for those people who do not understand humor. Well, there are such people, unfortunately, who had a very sad childhood, and I feel very sorry for them. They grow up, become adults, and have no sense of humor, because they had no joy in their childhood. Unfortunately, it's true. And so this imprint of childhood bitterness drives them into sadness and onto the dark side. And out of the darkness, through dark windows, 
They see even bright things as dark, and they put a label of their own understanding, even on our words, and say that we are supposedly so powerful, and we are so aggressive that we want to overthrow the government. We would be the first ones to never let that happen. Do you know why? Because we know better than anyone else what a change of government leads to, especially through violence. And what happens to us, ordinary citizens, the citizens of that country, those who haven't been in the shoes of the belittled and robbed will not understand. So, we will be the first to speak out in favor of never doing that. And we will never allow our Creative Society project to be used in someone's personal interests. And in the video, People and Power, we precisely said that such police officers create tension and undermine the authority of the government, the top leaders of their country. Why? Because people begin to hate those leaders in the first place, not the policemen who do this, but those leaders who run the country because they allow this to happen. So we understand perfectly well. And this is yet another reason why we are against interfering in politics. We realize that no matter who we replace with whom, nothing will change for ordinary people. Yes, maybe some slogans will change. Maybe, or maybe, they will even remain the same. But people will not live better because well, we live in such times that there is a global crisis and it is pointless to trade bad for worse. This is indeed so. However, those tensions that we, people, create, after all, the police officers who do that, it is you and us, friends, and those very presidents. Let's take the man who is called the last tyrant of Europe. People have different attitudes. A lot of people hate him while others have a lot of respect and love for him. So let's take an honest look. Is he good or bad? The man survives the best he can. That's the whole answer. And in his place, most of us would do exactly the same. Why do I say most of us? Because it applies to the majority, but the others, the minority, would do a whole lot worse than what he is doing. Do you think he doesn't want the creative society? He does. Do you know why? because he has children, and everything he does is done for himself and his family, just like any of us in this consumerist format, except for those who have truly realized that they need to live and care for all of humanity. But all the rest would act in exactly the same way that this man acts. Let's say people, his employees, and his retinue are not alien to him. However, by and large, he doesn't care about people, about his employees and his entourage. If there is a moment of choice between his family and his entire country, what will he choose? Some of us may say, this is inhumane, it's wrong. But answer honestly, just answer honestly. If you have a family, if you love your family, your children and your parents, what would you do? Let's carry out one more experiment. Just look, but be honest. The safety and lives of your family, your children, your parents, and you, personally in exchange, for the rest of the citizens of your country, regardless of which country it is. Answer honestly, friends. What will you choose? Will you sacrifice your own life and the lives of your relatives and friends for the whole country to survive? Or will you not do that? I understand. It's a moral issue. And now, we are not talking about laws, since this issue also relates to laws, because one cannot exchange what is lesser for what is greater, and so forth. Well, all these are games. It is all invented by people. But imagine a point-blank question. You have only one choice. You choose either or, 
either your family and your personal life, or the lives of strangers, or even acquaintances, but secondary people, secondary to you. Answer honestly. Don't lie to yourselves. Here's the answer for you, whether the last tyrant of Europe is good or bad. He is the same as us, just like anyone else. You know, they say, only a chicken rakes soil away from itself, while a human rakes it towards himself. Such is the format, such is life. Now, we don't have, excuse me, millennia of our future existence before us, where we can still play, try to influence the masses with some moral principles, some beautiful poems, music and creativity, try to convey to people that we should live better, try to influence them by creating, I don't know, something good and wonderful, where we will slowly and gradually displace everything bad from us, humans, and slowly and gradually build a new, beautiful world. We've built enough. Maybe we should stop lying, huh? We are really on the verge. Look around. Even this year, even now, half of the world is drowning, while the other half is drying up. The world is cracking under our feet at the time when a bomb is growing under us. Such a bomb that we, as the entire humankind, even with all our aggregate arsenal, have failed to create at least anything similar to that. It is much stronger and more powerful. We have nothing to counter the Cerberus with, the climate Cerberus, which has already raised its claws over all of humanity. Meanwhile, we continue to play. We continue to think about something, to dream, to build fantasies for future years. We keep playing politics, weighing who supports whom. Are you for the left or for the right? We keep dividing the world. And worst of all, killing each other. Thus, in our society, the consumerist format continues to rage by inertia. That darkness continues to dominate, as if it has billions of years ahead, while it has nothing. We are really in today, whereas tomorrow is a checkout counter for the entire humankind. We've been walking around the supermarket and playing warriors, politicians, or religion like little children in a sandbox. We have been in a game, in an illusion, in dreams. But today, we are approaching the checkout counter. And tomorrow, we'll get a bill. Are we ready for that, friends? To pay for everything we have deserved? Or will we actually change this world or will we have enough intelligence, humaneness, that truth inside us, that light inside us to dispel this darkness? Will we have enough courage to tell ourselves, the rest don't care, just like you don't care about the rest? After all, we are one-on-one -on -one before the devil and God. And first of all, we have to tell ourselves who we are. We have to answer a simple question. Am I a human or am I a slave? Do I choose light or do I choose darkness? And to answer the most important question for everyone, should this world exist or actually not? And if we, friends, choose the second option, then I'll put it as follows. If the world will cease to exist, let us at least unite on a different model. We will gather together and ask our leadership to blow up all the weapons they have made in order to kill us. What for? I will answer you. I'm sorry, I will answer from the heart, just as it is. It is better to do it now, while we haven't experienced pain and suffering yet. It is better to do it now, as long as we have hope that all this is an illusion, you know, that what is happening is like a bad dream, and it is happening to someone else, and not to us yet. It's better for us to fall asleep instantaneously, and everything would be gone, than to enter tomorrow, that day when the living will envy the dead.
Do you know such an expression? So, we are making it come true. We, people, with our inaction, disbelief, our laziness, our choice. To be honest, I know what the cycle is. And despite the fact that I consider myself a man, I want to cry when I look into tomorrow and understand what awaits us, people, and what we will have to go through before all this torment and suffering is over. You have no idea what it is. I'm not scaring you. I'm stating the facts right now, and quite responsibly. Just look at what is happening, at how people are suffering now. Those who faced the Cerberus, now they are the ones who faced it. Tomorrow, the Cerberus will come to us. This is inevitable, because it is growing, it is gaining strength, it is getting angrier and uncontrollable. It is turning into a monster. At the time when we are divided, at the time when consumption and selfishness prevail in our society. Excuse me, we are divided because someone is not in the religion you are in. But what religion are you in, my friend? Whom do you follow? Who do you consider yourself to be? The one who loves God or the one who follows people? Those who have changed your religion precisely in order to lead you not to God. It is worth pondering. So how can you hate someone if he is the same as you, your co-religionists? Yes, he belongs to a different religion. However, he also follows the one who leads you, but not to God. If you really love God, you love the entire world, then your heart is open to light and compassion as well then you don't care about Satan's tricks. Then you love people as Jesus Christ bequeathed. Then you see the world as it is in reality, and not as someone describes it to you. Then you are a mature, independent person, capable of looking into the future responsibly and honestly in making a mature decision. That's the point. My friends, I apologize for the truth. I couldn't hold myself. I understand that we are doing everything we can, and we will keep doing it. I understand that we have a prospect, and it really exists. We still have both time and opportunities. And in fact, people, all people are good, but the situation itself makes them bad. The world where we live and the situations people find themselves in change people's lives. But we can change everything. We can change this world for a better world. We can give a chance to any person, a great chance, to really start living with a clean slate in much better conditions than they have now. And most importantly, all of us together can give a prospect to this world we can really stop the climate Cerberus. That's in our hands. We already know a lot, and we already have a lot. We lack just one thing — humaneness. That's what is scary, that we don't have humaneness so far. And the most terrible crisis is the crisis of humaneness that we are now facing. Yes. We are standing in front of an abyss, but we are standing in front of it because we as the entire humankind are now in the most terrible crisis, the crisis of humaneness. Can we resolve this issue? It depends on each of us. It depends on our understanding and on our humaneness. You know, there is such an expression a human is a human insofar as he doesn't live for himself. When we begin to live for ourselves, 
we pass a sentence to ourselves. In my opinion, this is fair. If we realize that all of us are one, everything that divides us will collapse, and tremendous prospects will open up before us. I think this is important. I'm sorry, friends, once again, for raising these topics. I understand that it is better to talk about love, about happiness, about joy. But sometimes it is also necessary to talk about the truth. You have to agree, because it's the truth, so that we simply do not forget about it, and do not forget about what is really happening now. Each of us can do a lot, because the force is in everyone. The main point is to awaken it. But remember one thing, no matter how strong the darkness may seem to us, even a small candle destroys it with its light. Thank you. Thank you very much, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you and God's love.